ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلام عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا قال الله عز وجل بعد ان اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Dear brothers and sisters from a young age all of us or most of us anyone who's been raised as a muslim has harbored a special hatred for the shaitan we teach our children don't follow the shaitan we teach our children some of the tricks and traps of shaitan before we recite the quran we say and we teach our children say a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem seek refuge i seek refuge in allah from the cursed satan we know the story between him and our father adam alayhi salam the fierce hatred that shaitan has for banu adam for the tribe of human beings but how many of us know about his tricks in detail over the centuries many people many thinkers have listed some of the tricks and the traps of shaitan some of the common deceptions common aims and objectives of shaitan and anyone who reflects on human beings on human society human nature can come to similar conclusions with regards to the shaitan's modus operandi and likewise anyone who reflects over the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he or she will realize that there are some core things that shaitan wants to get bani adam to do allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already warned all of mankind when he said ya ayyuhal ya ayyuhan nas kulu mimma fi mimma fil ardi halalan tayyiban o mankind not just believers o mankind eat from that which is on the earth the halal the permissible and the tayyib the pure wala tattabi'u khutuwat ash-shaytan innahu lakum aduwwun mubin and do not follow when you're on this earth do not follow the footsteps of shaytan for he is to you indeed a clear enemy and what does he do allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, summarized in the next verse inna ma ya'murukum bis-su'i wal fahsha'i wa an taqulu 'ala allahi ma la ta'lamun allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has summarized in such a uh, concise beautiful summary what shaitan does all he does is he tries to command you to do a su evil any evil particularly that which brings about harm al fahsha shameful behavior anything bad that you are ashamed of wa an taqulu 'ala allahi ma la ta'lamun and that you say about allah or against allah that which you do not know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has combined the actions with the the thoughts and the the beliefs that you harbor about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shaitan tries to spoil all of these things for the son of adam alayhi salam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again and again he has warned us about shaitan inna shaitana lakum aduwun fattakhiduhu aduwa shaitan is certainly an enemy to you so take him as an enemy What does it mean to take shaitan as an enemy? Obviously, don't follow him, don't obey him. What is amazing is many of us Muslims 
When we claim that shaitan is our enemy, if you are to have an exam, I always say this, a khutbah is not about teaching anyone something new. Everyone knows these things, but we need to be reminded. We need to have things put into context. If you ask any Muslim, he'll say, yes, shaitan is my biggest enemy. However, actions speak louder than words. When he has a fight with his wife, then he begins to follow everything that shaitan is saying. When somebody does, cuts him up in the street and he becomes angry, he becomes a puppet of shaitan, does whatever shaitan tells him to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us, don't take him as an ally, take him as an enemy. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also told us one thing which differentiates Islam from anyone else. It differentiates the Islamic narrative that Allah has given compared to all other narratives about shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Inna kayd shaytani kana da'ifa. Certainly the plan of shaitan is ever weak. According to some religious traditions, they have inflated shaitan into some kind of powerful being. That he is able to do this and he is able to do that. But the truth of the matter is, shaitan is weak. Shaitan and his plan is weak. Because all he is able to do is invite you to do something. All he is able to do is to call me to do something. If I follow him, it's my own choice to follow him. If I reject him, it's my own choice with the tawfiq of Allah to reject the invitation of shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described this beautifully. When he paints us a picture of the day of resurrection, when shaitan is exposed and his followers come to him. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ And shaitan will say when the matter is established. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ Certainly, shaitan will say, Allah promised you a promise of truth. And I promised you, but I betrayed you. وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانِ And I never had any power over you. Shaitan will say to the people headed towards the hellfire, Allah protect us. I never had any power over you. Illa except, and da'awtukum fastajabtum li. I never had any power except, I invited you to do something and you listened to me. I invited you and you listened to me. So don't blame me, blame yourselves. Shaitan will say this. Inni kafartu bima ashraktu muni min qabl. I reject, I make kufr of the shirk that you made with me. Allahu Akbar. Look at this. I make kufr of your shirk. I reject. The shirk that you made by obeying me instead of Allah, shaitan will say this. Why? Because inna al-zalimin lahum adabun alim. Even shaitan, he will know this. For the zalimun, for those who are wrongdoers, for those who commit zulm, there is a painful punishment. So it behooves us, dear brothers and sisters, the elders, to remind ourselves and each other that yes, while, while the plan of shaitan is weak, and all he can do is call us and invite us. Nonetheless, the majority of mankind follows him. Maybe without even realizing. And certainly many, every single human being who's ever committed a sin, i.e. everyone, I'm talking to the human beings and not the angels. Every human being has the ability to be charmed, to be tricked and deluded by shaitan. But what does shaitan want us to do? Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he made a very concise list of the aims and objectives of shaitan. Number one, he wants people to commit something which is kufr or equivalent to that. Why? 
Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is so vast, it encompasses everything except if somebody dies upon this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha. Certainly Allah will not forgive that someone makes partners with him. I.e. if somebody dies in that state, he doesn't repent. But he will forgive anything lesser than that. So obviously this is shaitan's number one plan. If he can get somebody to give what, Allah, what belongs to Allah to someone else, then his job is done. He will say, Ma'as-salama, carry on in your life. If he can give, he can, he can encourage you, he can convince you to give that belief or that tawakkul, that trust, that love, that obedience, that fear, that hope that belongs to Allah, if he convinces you or me to give that to someone else, then his main objective is clear. So instead of... Bismillah. Can you hear me? So instead of giving that hope, that obedience to Allah, instead of putting Allah first in my heart, if shaitan convinces me to put someone else there, to obey someone else, before I obey Allah, then most of his job is done. May Allah protect us. But as for the Muslim, inshallah this does not affect us in its major state. In its major state meaning we don't commit major shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't commit kufr akbar. We don't worship for example a statue or something like this. But we may be uh, we may fall prey to some of the minor traps and tricks of shaitan in this regard. Such as when praying. Which one of us can say we're praying sincerely for the sake of Allah and not to maybe show off to the person next to us? And this is the thing that the Prophet ﷺ feared for his ummah, the Muslims. That when we're doing our acts of worship, when we're going to Hajj, when we're fasting and we break our fast together, when we're reciting Qur'an, when we're praying, shaitan will come to us and say, wow, you have a beautiful voice, why don't you beautify, let people enjoy it. So that somebody else might come into my heart. So I'm sharing that salah between Allah and the person I'm trying to uh, impress. Now this doesn't eject someone from Islam, but it will spoil that act of worship because only Allah only accepts something which is pure for His sake. And this is one of shaitan's tricks to try and spoil our actions. To make us give what belongs to Allah to someone else. If shaitan is unable to convince you to do a major, major kufr, then he will move on to his next uh, traps, which they said was doing acts of heresy and bid'ah. We say in every khutbah, we say, you know, kulla bid'atin dalalu kulla dalalant finnar. Every bid'ah is a misguidance, every misguidance in the fire. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ would frequently focus on this thing. He would warn his companions. Because the problem with bid'ah is somebody thinks they are doing something good but they're doing something maybe bad or something that's wasting their time, not giving them rewards. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said Man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fahuarad. Whoever does something that's not according to our affair yani whoever invents something into Islam that's not from it, it will be rejected. Shaitan also then tries to make us commit and tries to encourage us to commit major sins. And we know major sins that are attached to some kind of penalty or uh, 
some punishment in the hereafter such as drinking wine, fornication, uh, dealing with riba, interest on loans and so forth even disrespecting our parents is a major major sin may Allah protect us cutting off our relations your cousin for example your brother, your auntie cutting your relations, I'm not going to meet that person this is a major sin may Allah protect us but after this point inshallah none of us are involved in major sins and if we are we quick, we're quick to repent but after this point shaitan's traps become a little more elusive a bit more sophisticated that we have to pay closer attention and we'll discuss this in the next khutbah Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen, Nabiyyana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. You know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really hates something, like a type of crime or a major sin, such as zina, fornication or adultery, not only does He say that this is a major sin, stay away from it. Wala taqrabu zina, He says, don't even go close to zina. Not only does he tell us and warn us this, but he surrounds these major sins with lots of other sins, which we call minor sins. So you cannot commit zina just by mistake. You have to commit so many sins before you're in that position. You have to fail at lowering your gaze. You have to fail at not being alone with the opposite sex in, uh, in privacy that you're not allowed to be with. Touching and so on and so forth. All of these things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surrounds the major sin to protect us. So that when we commit a small sin, when we start to go towards the, the so-called minor sins, something wakes up inside us and we avoid the major sins. And this is shaitan's trap to try and make us take minor sins lightly. <coughs> doesn't matter if just one look. Doesn't matter if I'm just doing this one business deal that might have a bit of riba in it. Doesn't matter if I eat this or drink that. Shaitan wants us to go off the straight path a little bit now so that eventually slowly, 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 slowly you'll be so far away from the path and then you'll eventually fall into the major sins. So that is what shaitan tries to encourage us to do. If he fails at making you go and commit a major sin, and for a Muslim generally, shaitan is not going to say, go and drink that alcohol. He's not going to say, go and commit zina. He's not going to say, go and kill that person. He's going to try and encourage you to do the small sins, the first step. And step by step by step, he will lead you all the way to that major sin. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La tattabi'u khutuwat shaitan. Don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. But after that, all of us, alhamdulillah, we know we don't commit sins, even if it's minor. We don't say this is a minor sin, it doesn't matter. We say it's a sin against the one who owns the universe, the creator of everything. We don't look at how minor the sin is, we look at how magnificent Allah is, the one who you're sinning, sinning against. This is how we act as Muslims. But then for those types of people, shaitan has his other tricks. To occupy us, preoccupy us with permissible things, to waste our time. Look how clever shaitan is, but his plan is still weak. It requires us to follow him and obey him. This is similar to procrastination something everyone complains about everyone has those aims that they want to get uh, achieve in their deen in their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you want to memorize this much Quran you want to do Hajj you want to fast regularly you want to read this much Quran every day you have those aims and objectives but somehow you're thinking I don't have time this is one of shaitan's traps he will try and preoccupy with permissible things. Watching TV, 
going out, maybe working extra, extra hours, overtime. Not working to survive, no, just working extra time over hours, uh, over time. So that if you spend all of your time and your energy doing permissible things, you won't be able to progress and do those things which bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of us complain about this, about procrastination. But for this I just have one piece of advice I heard recently. In management they say, five minute rule. Many of us are put off by the, the magnitude of a task. How can I do this whole huge task? I'll just do it another day, I'll leave it for tomorrow. How can I memorize the whole juz of the Qur'an? It's, it's going to take too long, I'll start, some, I'll start next year. No, if you have a task that's too big to do now, commit to do five minutes of it. Commit to doing five minutes of it. So let us memorize Qur'an for five minutes a day. At least, at least for that five minutes, you'll be doing something. Number one, you'll get some benefit. Number two, you'll get out of the cycle of shaitan, encouraging us to delay and divert our attention. Because our attention now is on that task. Even if it's for five minutes. And number three, chances are if you start doing for five minutes, eventually you can do it for 10 minutes, 20 minutes until your job is done. So shaitan tries and tries and tries to preoccupy us with permissible things so that we waste our time and are unable to move to the next level in our deen. And the final trick I'll mention now is a very insidious one. And that is, one shaitan, maybe he's given up trying to encourage you to do shirk, kufr. He's given up trying to make you do, uh, encouraging you to do the major sins, the minor sins. He's given up even trying to make you waste time on permissible things. So what will he do? He will try and make you do good things. He will encourage you to do good things that have less reward than better things. Look at this. So when you're coming to the masjid to pray, for example, the time, the sunnah of that waqt, the, time, the best thing to do at that time, for example, is to pray. The adhan just went and it's about time to pray. And then someone comes to you saying, I'm interested in Islam, will you? Will you explain some Islam to me and you think, and shaitan will tell you, you should give this person da'wah. Maybe he'll become Muslim, maybe this will happen, maybe this will happen. So he's making you preoccupy your time with something with this much reward to divert you away from doing something with this much reward. And all of us have these examples in our own life. Maybe you're sitting at home, there's time for you to read some Quran for example. But he says, you know what, just put on some Islamic TV channel. Maybe you'll get some reward from that. These are just some of, a few of the tricks and traps of shaitan. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, Inna kayda shaytana kana da'ifa. Inna kayda shaytani kana da'ifa. That the plot of shaitan is ever weak. All he can do is invite us and it's up to us, do we let him in or do we keep him out? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all our shortcomings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us strength and tawfiq in our battle against shayateen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasna wa fi al-akhirati hasna wa qina adhab al-nar. Wa'afu anna wa ghafil lana wa rahamna anta maulana wa fansulana al qawm al-kafirin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa aqimu salam.